Hey sneaker friends, today we're gonna have a look at Nike's Pegasus 37. Are you ready? I bought the Nike Zoom Pegasus 37 on Nike's website, nike.com. It was $120. I did get a women's size eight. Now I went with the launch color, but there's a whole variety of different colors to pick from. If you go to the other website, you can see what's available. Starting with the outsole, sometimes the outsole uh, material is actually marked on the bottom of the outsoles. It is on the Peg 37. It's actually right over here. Now it says OGRS001. Well, that is a common rubber. Now I measured it and the lugs were about 2.35 millimeters and the web was about two millimeters. So that's over four millimeters of rubber giving you traction on the bottom of the shoe. And also you can tell the coverage, there's a lot of rubber. Has the appropriate flex grooves in it, but still you got about 90, 95% coverage so you should have no issues with traction on this shoe. The hardness is an 80 Shore A, which is a good hardness. It should last for quite a while. The midsole. So this is where the new technology has been put in the shoe. So Nike's talking about different four foot cushioning. So first you have the React foam, heel to toe covering the entire shoe. But in the forefoot now, there is a zoom bag and they say it's twice as large as previous zoom bags. And it's also top loaded. So what does top loaded mean? It means it's put in the top of the midsole so that's closer to your foot. If you remove your sock liner and look in the shoe, you can see where the strobel takes the shape of the airbag. So you can actually see what the shape of the airbag is. Now the midsole durometer is about a 38 Shore 8. That's pretty typical for a React foam. The offset is 10 millimeters. So you have 24 millimeters in the heel and that's the height and then you have 14 millimeters in the forefoot so an overall offset of 10 millimeters so the upper it is a translucent engineered mesh now that translucency also is uh, acting as holes for providing breathability one key thing about this upper is actually the midfoot band so you'll notice a midfoot band and it's attached to the lacing system so as being part of the lacing system when you adjust the laces you're also adjusting the security around the mid part of your foot i do like that it does give you an essence of being in the shoe more um, than some other just plain lacing systems. Otherwise, in your upper, you have pretty standard heel foam. Uh, you have internal heel counter. It's about a medium hardness. You have a flat lace. The tongue is no sewed around the edge of it. And you also have a seam at the bottom of the throat where the tongue is actually seamed to the upper. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this. If you reach in the shoe, you can kind of feel the ridge that is there. Um, I couldn't feel it with my socks on. I couldn't feel it running. So, so that's great. But in general, I usually don't like a uh, seam there. Now, the strobel is full length in this shoe and it is about three millimeters thick of a soft foam. So it is giving you a little extra cushioning. Now you also notice that your tongue is actually gusseted. Now what that means is that the tongue is attached to the lining of the shoe. And that's purely to keep the tongue in the center. So as you're running or walking, it's not sliding to the right or left. Sometimes uh, brands will gusset it to the lining like it is in this shoe. And sometimes you'll see that little loop around the laces. Again, that's the same thing, just to keep the tongue centered. The sock liner is about five and a half millimeters of open cell foam. Again, it's soft. It's just gonna be providing you with more cushioning. When I weighed the two shoes, the right shoe came in at 8.0 ounces and the left came in at 8.1 ounces. Now what's really interesting about this is that on Nike's website for a women's eight, which this is a women's eight, it says it's 8.24 ounces. So somehow I lucked out in that I got lighter weight shoes, but now I'm wondering, am I missing that little bit of cushioning? No. The the reality is that that amount of weight doesn't really matter that much unless you're a professional track and field star or super high, high level athlete where a little bit of weight does matter. But in these shoes, these weights around eight ounces, you know, that's pretty good for a Pegasus. Now, one thing you will notice on the sock liner of the shoe, uh, it does say QMR2 and MR10. Now that's the last identifier. So that means that this sock liner was built around the bottom of that last. So that's one way to tell what your last is. Sometimes they are marked on the inside of the tongue. Sometimes the brands will label them. But what you know is if, if you've worn a shoe in the past that's an MR10 or QMR2, you know you might like the fit better if you can identify what last it is. Now, the last thing that I thought was really interesting about the shoe, if you look on Nike's website and you look at the comparison of the men's shoe to the women's shoe, they have some specific statements that are different about each shoe. Now for the men's peg 37, they specifically say that the shoe is tuned for him with an air unit that delivers 
just the right cushioning for your run. Now, as soon as I saw that, I thought, wait a second, so what's different in the women's? Well, in fact, there is a difference in the women's, or at least this alludes to it. So on the women's uh, site, you'll see the Pegasus 37 is specifically tuned for her with a PSI that delivers just the right cushioning for your run. So what that tells me is that the men's and women's pressure that's in the airbag, so again, there's the airbag in the forefoot, the pressure is different from men's to women's. Now they don't specify, is it higher for women? Is it lower? You know, there's literally no details about this, but that is interesting that they are catering uh, differently to men and women. That makes me wonder if they found performance benefits and women's PSI, so the air pressure, the airbags being different. Now, one thing I did notice about the shoe, and it's only on my right shoe, is that the upper has these divots in it. Um, and you know, that that's just a construction problem, right? When they molded the forefoot here, there's probably a little reinforcer there and it didn't mold well. Or in the box, uh, you know, the other shoe was just sitting against it. It doesn't look super great. And then the last thing that I want to call out about the shoe. So normally when the rubber wraps up the toe, it wraps up in the center. Now they have it offset on the shoe, right? So it, it's, it's wrapping up at an angle. It's not dead on center and neither of the shoes are. So usually I would check one and if it was uh, maybe, you know, one was just not assembled well, but they're actually both like that, which tells me that that is intentional. Now from the top view down, it does look a little bit weird. Like it, it caught, it caught my eye a few times. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. So anybody try the Pegasus 37, let me know what you think of in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you guys have an awesome day. See ya.